All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys, and uh, welcome to episode 100 and take a look at the fucking text of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. I'm recording this one in Gold Coast. I have about an hour, probably less than that, to do the podcast before I get on stage, so I thought I would do that for you cunts. Um... Oh my god, Keelan has just sent me a photo of him going to Sizzler. The cunt has been talking about going to Sizzler the entire trip. If I thought that I'd have to think about Sizzler this much, I wouldn't have booked all his flights. All he's been talking about is going to, I'm going to Sizzler. As soon as we get to Gold Coast, I'm going to go to Sizzler. We're all going to go to Sizzler. And we're all like, yeah, I guess if we have time, whatever, maybe we'll go. Um, And then we were, you know, me and tour manager, Dylan, we're like, yeah, yeah, if we we have time we can go we get to gold coast we don't have time i gotta do the podcast dylan has to do sound check and all this other shit keelan just sent me a photo of him by himself at sizzler so it's good to know that he's doing that instead of um uh editing the clips but it is a saturday it's his day off he doesn't start working until the show starts so good on him i'm glad that he's living his dream although i am a little bit fucking uh, shocked that his dream is going to sizzler shit dream man but at least you're achieving it you know having a shit dream and getting it done it's a lot better than uh than having a a big dream and failing actually i'd take that back it's so much worse (laughs) um so i guess you're all here um sorry i did miss last week's episode i've been busy with the tour but shouldn't happen again because i've got my i got my schedule all, all planned out but you're all here because uh, you want to know what happened at the fucking Gimpy show. Uh, before I get into it, I'm uh, I didn't manage to bring a tripod that was he- that holds up this massively heavy mic, so I am holding it with my hands. It's not a handheld mic, so if you do hear some microphone noise, if I'm not completely in focus, uh, if you have any issues with this episode of Spearhead Sundays, um, just have a look at your bank statements. And just go through it and see how much you're paying to receive these episodes. And if it's zero, suck my dick. <laughs> oh, that's good. All right. So now with that out of the way, um, the, I'll, I'll talk to you about the Gimpy show, man. It was um, uh, the first show of the tour was Sunshine Coast. That was fun. Gold Coast is number three. Gimpy was number two. Um, now, as you guys know, I've been ranting and raving about how the tour has been selling incredibly well in every single city except for Gimpy. Sunshine Coast had a great turnout tonight. Gold Coast got like over 100 people in. Should sell out by the time the show starts. It's fucking awesome. First Melbourne show just sold out. Second Melbourne show, only like 100 seats left. So it's two thirds full already. And it's not for another month. Uh, Brisbane in two weeks, I've sold hundreds. Cunts are filling up theatres across the country except for Gimpy, right? And I've been talking about how badly Gimpy has been selling for weeks on end. Pretty much since as soon as I put the tour on sale, I saw my sales everywhere and I was like, I'm going to sell more tickets than I ever have in my life and Gimpy is going to be abysmal. Gimpy will have nothing to do with that, right? Week before the show, I'd sold 10 tickets. 10. And it's 300 seats they booked me in because it was cheaper. Man, I would rather make no money and perform in a theater that has 100 if I'm only selling 10, let's be honest, right? 10 in 100, doable. 10 in a 300, fucked, yeah? So anyway, dreading Gimpy, promoting it as hard as I can, posting about it on Instagram, talking about it on Speared Sundays, on Luke and Lewis, on my main channel, fucking everywhere, to the point where people are more concerned about how many other people are going to the Gimpy show than they are actually coming to any show on the tour. No one gives a fuck about my tour. Everyone just cares about the Gimpy show. And you know what? Me too. <laughs> that was the only one I cared about. I was like, oh, all the other ones are selling. I don't have to do anything. But fuck, Gimpy. That's an emergency, right? So all they've been talking about is Gimpy. All people have been asking about is Gimpy. How many tickets are you selling? How many tickets are you selling? None of your fucking business, all right? Except for when I tell you, okay? So week before the show, I'd sold 10 tickets in Gimpy. And I 
I think the least amount of tickets I've ever sold in my career was 17 tickets in Brisbane, and that was in my first year. This is two of five, okay? This is my sixth year of comedy. I haven't sold less than 20 tickets for, it'd have to be years. I'm trying to think of when I've sold, yeah, I think that, yeah, it would have to be years, like since my first year, and even then, it was only Brisbane that sold that poorly. So I was like, what the fuck's going wrong with me? I'm going backwards. Or it's Gimpy. It's one of the two. So we get to Gimpy, right? Still, only 10 tickets sold. I only get a ticket update once a week. So I'm freaking out. (laughs) I'm like, fuck, it was 10 last week and it was 10 the week before that and it was 10 the week before that. I'm not selling any. I'm pushing it hard, promoting it as much as I can. And then the week comes around and I get a call from my my, uh, the tour manager and he goes, mate, good news i'm like i fucking hope so i need some right so i go well what's the good news and he goes mate uh melbourne just sold out we've added another show i'm like oh that's amazing he goes man brisbane's going crazy i'm like fuck yeah and he goes and gimpy i'm like yeah gimpy what we've sold it out he goes no we haven't sold it out but ticket sales are up 60 percent i'm like fuck yeah hang on what's 60 percent of 10 oh six 16 that was the fucking night of the show 16 in a 320 seat theater or so i thought it was a theater until i arrived at the venue and i found out i was performing at a golf course not a theater not a bar not a room no stage a golf course a fucking golf course a function room at a golf course and they had not that wasn't bad enough right they had split it in half because i sold so poorly they're like oh well we might as well start setting up for next weekend early they split the venue in half half of it is full of fucking 20 seats for me and then two-thirds of the fucking theater is set up for a wedding and it's a bogan gimpy wedding too so there's just streamers and pink and sparklers fucking everywhere right you i i can't i couldn't imagine the level of disappointment that you would have as a fan going into that fucking venue thinking oh boy can't wait to see lewis spears and you walk in No, even before you walk in, can't wait to see Lewis Spears. You open up the maps, you put the address of the venue in, and then it comes up with your local golf course. And then you go, nah, surely that's wrong because that's not a theater. That's not even a bar. That's not even a performance space. That's not even an alleyway. That's a golf course. Surely must be wrong. I'll check the website. You go onto the website, it says tickets are still available because I haven't sold out, of course. And you go through and you go, all right. Looks like we're going to a golf course for a comedy show, boys. Let's fucking rip it up, right? You drive there and you think, oh, well, if it's a, even if it is a golf course, at least there'll be lots of people there to see Lewis Spears and you get in and you go, all right. It's quite literally a golf course, and I am one of 16 cunts. <laughs> oh, fuck. All right? So anyway, the show was actually awesome. I love, I like small shows because they don't, they hardly ever happen now. And small shows, they're fun because you can spend time on each person. You can kind of talk to everyone and, and uh, it's like, it's a lot more loose, a lot more casual. I sat down a lot of the show. It was more slow. I got to spend more time and do a lot of crowd work, which we filmed. You guys will be seeing some of it soon. Um, It was really, really good. Um, So we ended up getting 25 people in, but here's the thing, right? I go around, I'm doing my show, I'm going really well. The, the, the very few people that were there were fucking up for it. Like, I feel like everyone was, everybody there, because I had talked so much about how poorly Gimpy was selling, everyone there knew exactly what it was going to be. And everyone there was kind of stoked to be part of that tiny show. Do you know what I mean? Like, everyone was like, it's a tiny show, but that's kind of why we're here. Fuck yeah. Awesome, right? So anyway, all these people come. It was about 25 with door sales. 25 cunts in a fucking golf course that's set up for a wedding and then I get on stage no opening act right because there's no comedians in Gimpy and I think I know why because nobody in Gimpy goes to comedy (laughs) right but not only right this is where it gets fucked 
Not only did I only sell 25 tickets in Gympie, I start doing the show and as from doing crowd work, I start to realize something about the audience, okay? And they were a great crowd. They were an amazing crowd. But I started to notice something about all of them, right? I talked to one young couple in the front row, do a bit of, you know, funny shit, make them laugh, talk about them. And then I, then I go, oh, well, uh, you know, what do you think about um, Gimpy? And they, and they both go, oh, I'm not from Gimpy. I drove from Harvey Bay. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Thanks for driving. Whenever the show goes on, I talk to another guy right at the back two boys and I go hey how you guys going do a bit of banter make everybody laugh all good and I go oh you know uh, what do you uh, what do you think about the gun store in Gympie have you ever been there and then both of them go oh, we're not from Gympie we came from Gold Coast I'm like why the fuck did you come from Gold Coast I'm doing a show tomorrow and they're like oh we just wanted to see the small Gympie show <laughs> And I was like, fuck yeah, I needed, the, I needed the help. Thank you very much for traveling. Anyway, I do that, crowd work, to three other groups. None of them say they're from Gympie. And then I go, hang on a second. Who here, because I've talked, I've talked to what? I've talked to 10 people now, half the crowd. None of them are from Gympie. And I go, hang on a second. There's 25 people here. Put your hand up. If you're from Gimpy, three cunts put their hands up. Three people from Gimpy came to my Gimpy show. Everyone else traveled from a different town, the same town. Pretty much every single person came from a town called Harvey Bay or another town which is only 40 minutes away from Harvey Bay. I never should have been doing a show in Gympie because I clearly don't have any fans in Gympie. In the whole town of Gympie, I have three fans. And I asked them after the show, hey, if I did a show in Harvey Bay, would you have just driven there? And they were like, yeah. And you probably would have sold a lot better because people who, you know, didn't want to drive from Harvey Bay to Gympie would have gone also. I was like, for fuck's sake, I never should have done a show in Gympie. Bro, I've been doing comedy for six years. I've done five tours. I must have done almost over like of, of Lewis Spears shows where Lewis Spears fans buy tickets over a hundred, right? Easy, easily over a hundred ticketed shows. And I have never in my life done a show in a town where nobody in the audience is from that town. Do you know how fucking weird that is? Everybody traveled outside of Gimpy to come to the Gimpy show. Why the fuck did I get booked in Gimpy? That is insane. That'd be like me doing a show in Melbourne and everyone in the audience is from Sydney. Fucking crazy. Because I was like, oh, I thought it, when I was in Gimpy, the, the town is a, bit of, is a bit of a shithole and there's lots of funny things about it. So I was like, oh, uh, there's a lot of bad things that I could say about Gimpy, but I won't think about writing those jokes because I don't want to upset the locals because there's only a few of them and I want to show my appreciation to the locals for coming out. Bro, fuck Gimpy and fuck the locals there except for those three cuts. <laughs> should have gone hard i was like oh i didn't want to go hard against gimpy and then the whole audience was like no fuck gimpy it sucks i don't know we don't want to be here either <laughs> so to the three people from gimpy thank you very much for coming out but i won't be coming back next year because clearly you guys are the only three cunts in that town that actually like me you'll have to drive to harvey bay next year when i do a show where people actually want me to show up that's insane no wonder i was selling so poorly it didn't make any sense like all of the other shows were going nuts it didn't make any sense that i sold so poorly in gimpy until i walked on stage and realized that i quite literally only have three fans in that town and everyone else is just two hours away so fucking crazy man so thank you very much to the people who came out to the gimpy show the boys who traveled from gold coast everyone else who came from harvey bay and the three people who actually lived in gimpy 
man that so that's that's what it was guys i was like fuck this doesn't make sense and it doesn't make sense it was just a booking error i never should have been booked there fucking hilarious but let me tell you about what happened this morning right when this morning we were in gimpy we drove uh we just got to gold coast today bro the most gimpy shit ever happened right <laughs> So we're, we're staying in this motel and it's like one of those, those uh, uh, motels that you see on like American television where the, where the fucking prostitutes just hang out at night knocking on the doors, right? Just fucking all these lonely truckers and long haul workers who are just there to sleep for the night. That shit, right? All the dealers are just running their business out there because it's no expenses are, are saved here. I mean, here at Gold Coast, I'm actually in a really nice place. Um, because we're performing at a hotel and they had empty rooms. So they just gave me like the fucking master suite and another room. And I was like, fuck it. Keelan can have the good room. I'm sweet in the small one. I'm weird like that. I never, I, n- I never feel comfortable in like, maybe it's because I didn't come from money. Maybe it's because I didn't, we never grew up with money, but I always feel more comfortable in like a smaller, in a smaller hotel room. Cause the, cause the room they gave me thinking that I would take it is like, giant like the bedroom is is as big as the room i'm in now and the room i'm in now is pretty fucking big right for a hotel room or at least what i'm used to the fucking master bedroom is so huge you could have an orgy and a business meeting in there and neither of those two groups would run into each other you know you could be talking about double penetration and graphs in the same room and both parties wouldn't be disturbed by the other one <laughs> so keelan's in there there's like a giant master bedroom and then a huge bathroom um that's like three times the size of my bathroom it's got a bath i don't have a bath this and that it's got everything he's got like a great view you can walk straight out and he gets a pool and then he has a a giant boardroom meeting room thing as well there and then i just have a bed and a bathroom and a tv and i am set and this couch um so I just, I said, yeah, you can have the big one. I, I don't want that. So I guess he's going to fucking have a giant sizzler party there. <laughs> uh, much happier in the smaller room. Um, but Gimpy, yeah, the place we stayed in Gimpy, dude, um, it was fucking next level. Um, so yeah, it's like one of those, those like motels where you open the door, the front door, and you're just on the street. Okay, so one of those ones. There's a window, it faces the street, and it's like in a, it's in Gympie, which is just a rural town in Australia. So it's like road and then houses. And we got there last night after the show, very late, and uh, we rock up. And just by coincidence, some other people were also uh, packing up and and uh, and getting into the into the motel, packing shit out of their car and taking it into the shithole motel. So we say hi to them and it's no worries. Just like an old, maybe 60 year old dude must be on a road trip with his wife or whatever while they can still do it. And um, so just a lovely older couple. And then this, this dude rolls up in a fucking, the, one of the biggest Hilux trucks I've ever seen in my life. It's just a Hilux truck and it's got four giant fuck off spotlights on the top of it. And and we hear it in the distance. We hear the giant engine and then we hear the music that it's playing. And my brother, he loves screamo and he loves death metal, real heavy stuff. I have never heard heavy music like this in my life i couldn't even tell that it was music for a second like you know i'm not saying that it was bad i'm saying that i literally didn't know that the noise was music because you can hate screamo but you know that it's music you know you hear the drums you hear the timing you hear the screaming you hear the guitars you can tell that it's music the shit that this guy was listening to it was so many instruments so much drumming so much screaming so much guitar at the same time that it blended into one noise that sounded like a fucking trash compactor and i couldn't tell that it was music it was just all at the same time and all of us go what the fuck is that everybody who's outside looks at it 
And then this guy, he's pulling into the house, his house, that is completely uh, on the opposite side of the road to the motel. And he sees us looking and his engine is super loud and he rolls down his window to reveal a bald head full of tattoos. Dude must have been about 50. And if you have a face full of tattoos and you're 50, you're not a SoundCloud rapper, all right? You're a fucking murderer, dude, for sure. That's what you are, right? And he puts the window down and he just sticks his massive tattooed head out and he goes what the fuck are you cunts looking at fuck off you dog cunts and everyone just goes whoa that came out of nowhere i almost wanted to say hey bro i'm looking at you because you have more face tats than brain cells and you're playing screamo music and you have four spotlights on the top of your fucking car. You clearly want us to look just so you can yell us and say, why are you looking? We both know the answer. It's because you are the most terrifying cunt I've ever seen in my life. That's why I'm looking at you. Who gets their face tattooed and then feels shit when people look at them? Dumb cunts. It's like, dude, it's on your face. If you want to get a crazy tattoo and you don't want anyone to stare at it, put it on your pussy or something. Putting it on your face and then wondering why cunts are staring while you're playing the heaviest metal as loud as possible at 10 p.m. at night as you can, right? So he's screaming at everyone and then we're like, whoa, fuck, this is too hectic. It's nighttime. So we just go straight in the motel and we go, we'll pack up when we'll get the stuff from the car when he goes to sleep. So... He gets into his house. He's screaming at the old guy. Fuck you. What the fuck are you looking at? You're a fucking dog cunt. All this shit. Screaming. And then anyway, he goes in. He locks his gate up. He's got three massive, huge, terrifying looking dogs. And he's the kind of guy who's got, who's like, the, you, like, you know, when a guy has scary dogs because he wants scary dogs and he wants to scare cunts. He was one of those cunts. He's like, yep, I got dogs. You scared, mate? one of those people like he doesn't even like the dogs he just likes the power that the dogs give him you know like he doesn't pat him he doesn't look at him he doesn't even really know their names all he knows is that they won't bite him but they will bite you that's the kind of guy that was there in gimpy anyway he goes in his house and we fucking grab all the shit out then we go in in the room we talk about how crazy that was morning comes around And it is, what day is it today? It is Saturday? Saturday morning, right? So, what do you like to do on a Saturday morning? Me? I like to wake up a little bit later than usual, you know, maybe wake up at 11, 12, fuck it. Sometimes even 1 p.m. It's the weekend, you know? Don't have anything to do. Might have a relaxing day. It's a Saturday. I've been working hard all week, you know, telling jokes this and that, I'll wake up naturally, you know, no alarm, just whenever my body feels like waking up, I'll just get up, get out of bed, and then I'll just decide what I'm going to do on that day when I wake up, maybe I, maybe I don't want to do anything, maybe I want to play World of Warcraft all day, I could do that, I'll just get up, have breakfast, maybe read my book a little bit, I might do a little bit of editing, if I feel like it, you know, maybe some writing, or maybe, fuck all of that, maybe I'll get breakfast at a cafe, you know, that would be nice too, maybe I'll go to Chapel Street, and go to my favourite comic book shop, Comics R Us, and just, you know, buy some comic books, and go to a nice place in the sun, and read my books, and just have a relaxing day, maybe Maybe I'll see my girlfriend, hang out with her, you know, just go for a stroll, just anything to calm me down, anything, you know, just have a nice relaxing day. I'm sure you guys are very similar. Do you know what that tattooed fucking mad cunt from Gimpy does? He wakes up at 10 a.m., starts his car, starts blasting death metal, and then he drives past the motel that's outside his house and goes fuck you cunts wake up (laughs) that's what he does and he woke us all up it was the most terrifying wake up call ever I thought he was about to come in because you open our front door, it goes straight onto the street. Terrifying. 
Um, but yeah, and then, right, then so we get up and we, we go, oh, well, at least he's gone, you know, the guy's gone. And then we get up and um, the cleaning staff are there just cleaning all the empty rooms. And uh, Dylan, our, our tour manager, goes up to the girl and goes, oh, what's up with that guy? And she goes, oh, yeah, um, he uh, we have problems with him all the time. The cops have to come around about once a week. We have to call on him because he uh, hates the, the motel. I don't know why. We've never spoken to him. And he's never said why he hates it, but he just hates it. Uh, I think it's because people look at him. <laughs> She actually said that. I think it's because people look at him and he just doesn't like that. But, he, you know, he thinks he's really tough and he likes to stand over people. And we we're like, oh, so is that his house? And he goes, oh, no, that's actually um, his wife's house. Um, he won't leave. <laughs> his ex-wife's house and he just fucking won't leave. The dude literally had six fridges in his backyard. Anyone who's got... Any f amount of fridges. If you've got one fridge in your backyard, you've got something crazy going on, right? If you have six fridges in your backyard, at least two of them have fingers in them, you know? They're packed full of body parts and fucking terrifying shit. Anyway, as we're about to leave, he comes back. I guess, I don't know, he went off to Bunnings to buy pliers so he can pull more fingers off of innocent strangers, yeah? So he comes back and we just hear... <laughs> and his fucking engines he's got his headlights on during the day for some reason the giant spotlights probably to scare people so we can run them down and then say it was their fault right and then he goes he pulls by and he doesn't even slow down he pulls in and he just and he just fucking fangs it straight into his into his driveway and then as he's turning i don't know how he did it it was some of the most impressive driving i've ever seen he's turning with one hand really fast sharp turn with the other hand he's winding his window down manually not with a button and then with his head he's sticking it out and going fuck you cunts fuck you you fucking dog cunts and then the cleaning lady goes shut the fuck up you freak shut up fuck you fuck off you ain't shit and we were like holy fuck this is so gimpy incredible apparently the dude has like got marbles i don't know where from he must have gone for a trip to get marbles this is what the cleaning lady told us right he's gotten a hundred marbles and the motel has a solar has solar panels going over their entire roof and he got a hundred marbles and threw them all on the roof breaking all of the solar panels <laughs> fuck i couldn't imagine living my life with that much like negative energy do you know what i mean like just anyone who looks at me i'll fucking yell at them i'm gonna get tattoos on my face to make me look scary i'm gonna get terrifying dogs i'm gonna listen to the hardest music possible so that at 10 a.m on a saturday i wake up fucking angry and i yell at the poor cleaning ladies terrifying them until i do it so often that it becomes normal and they just start yelling at me also i'm not going to get out of a house that i don't own fucking insane um all right i'm gonna take a little break here i need to use the bathroom i'll uh, be back in a sec all right so now's probably the perfect time to mention that uh brand new no slide season merch is on sale i'm actually wearing it now i don't know if you can tell uh in the light there but uh the design is on the uh, for fuck's sake the designs are, you know what it's on the fucking website why don't you go have a look at it all right it's really cool fucking hell all these cunts asking me dumb questions i can't tell you the amount of fucking retards who ask me oi oi is it 18 plus oi what time's the show? Oi, are there tickets still available? Oi, bro, uh, like I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm underage. Can I come with a parent or a guardian? Or can I just bring someone who's 18? Oi, bro, oi, uh, are you coming to this city? Are you coming to that city? How much are tickets? Oi, I'm a fuck, can you spoon feed me? I don't know how to eat. I'm a fucking infant. Oi, bro, why is water wet? All of these fucking dumb, fucking questions that are on my website the answer to is water wet is not on my website but you know what i mean stop uh, do, am i a comedian or am i customer service it is it does it say comedian in my instagram bio or oh, it does not customer service all right oh bro can i exchange my tickets why are you emailing me email the fucking 
email you got when you got your tickets. You know the one where it says, congratulations, you got tickets. If you need any help, here is the con... Look at that. What am I, Oz Ticks, Ticketmaster? No, I'm Lewis Spears. I'm the guy who tells jokes. When I'm at the show, right, and I'm on stage, right, here's what, here's what you can do. You can sit there and be like, oh, I hope this guy tells me jokes. And if I do, done, all right? <laughs> I'm not customer service. It's on the website, all right? Uh, most of the shows, if you are underage, you can come with a, with a parent or a guardian. And a guardian is just your 18-year-old mate or your brother. Um, what, what am I saying here? Um, fuck, it's been so hot. I was on the Sunshine Coast. My mum was like, Oi, pack your shorts. You're going to the Sunshine Coast. You need to pack your shorts. I'm like, what do I need shorts for? She goes, because it's called the Sunshine Coast, dickhead. The only thing they have is sun and the beach. You need shorts. And I went, no, I don't. Didn't pack my shorts. I only packed one pair of jeans. I think my legs have gangrene now because that's all I've been doing all for the last three days is sitting in a car, sweating into my one pair of jeans that I can't wash because I didn't bring any other pants. That's all I've been doing. Sweating into my jeans and also a little bit of piss after that guy from Gimpy yelled at me. Because <laughs> that was terrifying. Um, fuck, dude. Ah, what else have I been doing here? Um, we went to the gun store at, um, uh, at Gimpy and fuck, that was an experience. They had uh, this gun museum, right, uh, at the gun store. We just went in, we were just killing time. So they had, it was like a, I've been into a few gun stores. They're all pretty much the same, right? But this one was different. This one was unique as fuck, right? We go into this gimpy gun store, yeah? So we go in, and the middle part, normal gun store. Guns for sale, ammunition for sale, stuff to clean guns, information booklets, hunting guides, all that kind of shit, right? Normal gun store. And then shit, there's a big sign that points to the gun museum. And this little old lady, about 60 years old, comes out and goes, hello, boys, are you passing through the town? And I went, how the fuck did she know? She, probably because we look terrified at all of the weapons, right? And she goes, uh, would you like to see the gun museum? And I was like, yeah, fucking oath I do. I want to see all, all the gun museum and all, learn about the history of guns. That sounds cool. And she takes us into, <clears throat> I'll probably put photos of it on Instagram, uh, this room full of like every gun I've ever seen ever like on the internet movies history books every gun all of these different handguns all of these like machine guns rifles hunting rifles military rifles they had a mac 10 in there they had fucking they had like a, a gun no shit with a with a bayonet from it from the 1800s that shot um just the, the circular bullets, pellets, or whatever they're called, like a gunpowder gun that you've got to load and then put the stick in, and like a really old, like a beautiful relic. Uh, and then they had like handguns that, that also had the same thing that was super old. They even had um, tiny little 22 handguns that were, that were probably like less than six inches long, like tiny little guns that prostitutes would keep in their garter belts. Uh, and, you know, it wouldn't kill you unless you shot someone in the eye. Uh, but that's what they would do to defend themselves. It was, it was crazy, right? And she's giving us this tour. She's showing us all these guns from World War, World War I, World War II. They had a cannon in there, all this shit. Um, and they were beautiful old guns. But there was, man, there would have been like... Could have been 300 guns just on the wall, like plus, like full on. You couldn't even see the wall. It was just guns everywhere. And she was telling, she was walking us through like the history of guns and telling us all about it. It was super interesting. And then um, we get to this, uh, we get halfway through and I go, oh, so well, no, we get to, we get to World War, the modern war guns. So they had an AR-15 there. They had, I think they had an AK-47. I don't know too much about guns. Uh, they had a bunch of other guns and they had some assault rifles. They had like, like, like scary, you know, human killers. Like they had th those guns. Like what's the best way to kill as many humans as possible? They had those kind of guns, right? Uh, and I was like, uh, oh, these are, these are so cool. So that one's used in the military today. And she goes, yep, uh, so is this one and so is that one. And they used to use this one, but then they worked out that this one uh, shot bullets faster and was more steady. So they moved. Like she knew everything about guns. It was fucking crazy. She was like the internet. Right? No, she was like, she was like the replies 
of uh of on Twitter. She was she was the amount of gun knowledge that I was 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 seeing was like the equivalent to when someone tweets something negative about guns but gets one tiny thing wrong. Uh AR actually stands for armor light rifle, not assault rifle. So the legitimate point that you made about gun safety is now invalid because semantics, bro. <laughs> like that shit, you know? Um, that's that always brings out the autistic gun nuts is whenever someone gets was whenever whenever someone makes a really lucid good point about gun control but gets like one tiny thing wrong about how a handgun works or like a, a like or gets maybe the manufacturer of of one spring in the gun slightly wrong with a typo people will be like oh you you don't know anything about guns bro because you use a generalization instead of a fact <laughs> anyway. Um, so she's telling us all about all these guns, right? Um, modern shit, stuff that I'd, that I'd only ever seen in movies and in like military footage. And then I go, oh, so these, these are all like, um, are these all disabled, um, these guns? And she goes, oh no, they all work. We don't, we don't believe in disabling guns. And I went, wait, so the, the M16, that works? She goes, yep, you could pick it up off the wall and shoot it today if you had the bullets, which are in the back. And I was like, so the AK-47, she said, yeah, yeah, that, that works. That one's fine. You probably don't want to shoot some of the older guns because they might break because, you know, we don't shoot those because we want to preserve them for history. But all of the other guns are in perfect working order. They all work. We actually don't believe in disabling guns. Um, even if they're illegal, we don't believe in it. So if someone came in with a gun that was illegal and they wanted to pay us to disable it, we would actually send them away. And I was like, dude... This has got to be the most illegal shit I've ever seen in. It was like 300 guns and you, I reckon at least 270 of them were illegal as fuck. It was crazy. The, that, that gun store was just like, oh, we don't believe in disabling guns even if we have to by law, so we don't do it here. And I was like, holy shit. And they had a cannon. And I'm like, so he, so the cannon works? She goes, yep, the cannon works. Yeah, you could fire that up if you had the bullets. I was like, do you have the bullets? She goes, yep. <laughs> they had a fucking cannon, bro. A working cannon. Someone who came to the Gimpy show actually had been to the gun store and they uh, they told me how they got the gun. They got the, they got the sorry, the cannon. <clears throat> they got the cannon because the cannon... Uh, was taken home after World War II and it was just put outside a, a council somewhere and kids were playing on it. It wasn't disabled, right? And it was just getting rusty and fucked and dangerous. So they just put it up on Facebook Marketplace. Some cunt from Gimpy bought it for $1,000, put it in his backyard and then he had it for two weeks and then the police rocked up to his backyard and went, uh, sir, you have a class R military weapon in your backyard in working order. Do you have a permit for that? And he goes, nah, I just thought it was cool. So I chucked it in my yard, eh? And they were like, all right. And then the police took it and then they just gave it to the gun store. And now the gun store has a cannon that works. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. I thought only, I thought that well, that was the kind of shit that only happened in Texas, but apparently, you know, having an having an a literal armory of illegal weapons is going on in Gimpy. Fucking good on him. And I and I and I, I thought that initially I was like, oh well, they are a gun store. They they're responsible gun owners. That makes sense, but. Bro, in the gun store, there were targets, right, for, for shooting practice. There were deer targets. There were, like, circular targets. There were this and that, all different kinds of targets all around the, wo all around the wall, all of the walls. And on every, on the center of every single target was John Howard's head. Because if you're not Australian, John Howard is the prime minister we had that banned guns after we had a huge mass shooting. And I was like, okay, you can have a cannon, but you can't also have politicians on targets. You can't have both. It's one or the other, right? You, can, you either have the politician plastered around your house on targets that are meant for shooting, or you get the military-grade cannon that still works. You have to choose, all right? It's one of the two. Fucking crazy. Look, here's what I'm saying. For all you cunts that are, that are pro-gun, look... 
I'm pro gun too, all right? I'm all for responsible ownership of firearms, but I draw the I draw the line at responsible cannon ownership. <laughs> you know, like you don't get to have a cannon in your yard that still works. That's that's where I draw the line because because if you if you're pro cannon, right? How many cannons? Maybe a couple of tanks. Then what? You're the army now. We we're, we're going to have two armies. Do you really want the, the general of your army being from Gimpy? No, thanks. <laughs> Dude, so funny. All right, I got to wrap this up soon because I got sound check. I'll do, uh, I'll do some life advice um, and then uh, we'll get to it. But um, before I do, I want to, I want to uh, just say uh, you'll probably be noticing on my channel, it's growing like crazy, actually, the channel. I've gone in the last 10 days, it's probably more by the time you're listening, I've gone up 30,000 subscribers. I'm getting like 600,000 views a day. It's fucking awesome. And it's just from like older videos going viral, the backlog, plus all of the new content that I'm putting out, getting more and more views. It's just working like this giant, mill it's awesome it's so good it's what it's it, it was the goal that that we were trying to do this year and it's really really working um so you're going to notice on my channel there's going to be a lot more uh stand-up footage coming out because dude we've only done two shows so far and they're only small shows and like i'm still like working out the hour but i reckon easy already we have maybe 10 to 15 minutes of crowd work that i could just upload now so I think that I honestly could have by the end of this tour and then a few more shows next year, a year's worth of stand-up footage to drop week by week. That's the goal. And I think, I don't want to make a big call, but I think we're going to get it at least every two weeks, you know, definitely once a month. But there's lots of stand-up footage and we're going to start rolling it out. Um, we're working on a tour vlog, but we're going to do it a little bit differently. I want to make them funny because I feel like I've done the cinematic cool tour vlog like three, three, four times in a row now. I've done that. What I want to do now is like a, like more like a funny travel show almost that has me walking around towns, shit talking the places that I'm in, being funny about the towns, talking to people, um, and then mixing in stand up footage with that about the towns and then cutting a few different cities into one episode so maybe for example we haven't started editing yet but what we're thinking is uh sunshine coast gimpy and gold coast will be one two of log and that'll be stand-up footage me walking around gimpy me telling these stories that i've told but on stage to and from stuff that's just a little bit more interesting than you know getting on a plane getting off a plane seeing the audience seeing the crowd it gets a little bit samey as we go along so um if there's anything that you that you want to see um while i'm on tour tell me and we'll film it if, if there's anything that you would love to see um the process of or or anything like that do let me know and we'll because uh, we're really experimenting with what this year's tour vlog is going to be um and i'd love to hear what you guys want to see so do let me know in the comments section um i would love to no all right here we go um if you would like to send an email to the podcast, uh, send it to podcast at loosespears.com um, and I'll give you some life advice. Uh, I just want to give a quick shout out. If uh, your uh, advice, if you need advice on depression, uh, bullying, suicide, anything a little bit too hectic, suicidal thoughts, anything like that, don't ask me. All right. Go to Lifeline. Google uh, suicide hotlines, anything like that, okay? I can't help you, all right? I'm not going to talk you through your depressive episode or anything about having suicidal thoughts. I can't do it, all right? I know you like me and you think that I'm funny, but I am not going to talk you out of that shit, okay? Not because I don't want to, but because I can't, all right? So if you're having any kind of hectic suicidal thoughts, don't email me Talk to professionals, go to Lifeline, Google it, all right? I am not going to be able to help you 
go there, all right? Please look after yourself. Look after your fucking mental health. Don't reach out to some cunt sitting on a couch in Gold Coast, sweating in his jeans after getting yelled at by a guy with face tats and gimpy. I can't help you. I know you like my comedy and you think that because I make you laugh and I make you feel fu- make you feel happy for 30 seconds once a week means that I can help you go through something super serious and hectic. No, take it seriously, bro. Get yourself some real help, not me. And I love you and so does everybody else, all right? Um, sorry to be a bit of a bummer. Let's get on to something awesome. I denied a homeless man his breakfast. <laughs> I'm going to get this homeless cunt emailing me now. I haven't read this yet, so if it's fucked, I apologize. Hey, Lewis, I'm a cunt. Please keep me anonymous. If you are reading this, you can call me Muhammad. No, I'm going to call you... Okay, I'm not reading this. All right, fuck off. Um, fucking hell. I, I really need to read these before I read them on the podcast because the, you guys are some, you guys are like, I feel like there's some, there's some funny stories about you accidentally being a cunt, but if you're a sociopath, I also don't want you to email me. Pissing off a drag queen. Hey, Lewis, uh, at the, at the, at the be, at the being of the year, at the, also pre proofread it if you're a fucking idiot. At the beginning of the year, I took a trip to America to celebrate finishing school. Toward the end of the trip, I ended up in New York. One day when exploring the streets, I saw a bald man slash woman doing their makeup in the window of one of the stores in the street. I was convinced that this person was a drag queen due to to seeing a number of them prior to getting to New York on the same trip. Yeah, there's lots of the, there's, there's lots of drag queens and stuff in New York. As I walked past, I whispered to one of my mates, "Drag queen." <laughs> Don't do that. I mean, I know that you want to, but you've got to wait until you're at least a block away, bro. Uh, I did it so quiet that my other friend didn't hear it. However, the person who was doing their makeup, who was further away than my mate who didn't hear, somehow heard me say it. You're, you're an idiot, bro. I, it's like me being tall. I know when someone is looking at me or getting their mate to look at me because of how tall I am. We have fucking super sense to that shit it's the same thing when i get noticed in the street but you don't have the confidence to come up and say hi i know when you're looking at me all right i am choosing to not walk up to you because you need to say hi to me i don't say hi to you all right if you want to say hello that's on you i love meeting you but i'm also not going to go out of my way to walk up to a stranger because i think maybe they know who i am because that's arrogant as fuck right so i know a hundred percent of the time when you notice me in the street because you like my stuff or if you're just astonished at how tall i am and you have no idea who i am i know all right just the same way that every fucking drag queen knows when you look at him every midget knows when you're looking at him every fucking fat cunt knows when you're looking at him everybody knows everybody who has a thing knows when someone else is looking at them because of that thing because we've seen the look and we've heard the whispers our whole life so at least wait a block before you look and point, all right? That's all I'm asking. You can look and point, that's fine, but at least wait for a block so I don't have to deal with it. However, the person who was doing their makeup, who was further away than my mate who didn't hear, somehow heard me say it. I was then hit with about five, you fucking what, bitch? Get your ass back here. Trying to fight me from this person as I continued to walk, pretending nothing happened, hoping that this person didn't have a gun and open fire on me and hoping I wouldn't see them again by the time I left New York. At the end of the day, this uh, person who I made fun of was actually just a woman with cancer. <laughs> bro and i called her a drag queen oh the poor woman oh fuck you're an asshole i hope you think about that every day for the rest of that woman's short life (laughs) oh fuck and now i'm going to hell with that i'm going to end it guys thank you very much for listening um speared sundays comes out every sunday except for last week sorry about that but uh i'm back on track with it all and we're on a roll here all right i will see you at uh the tour no slide season it's on sale now loosespears.com slash gigs i have brisbane is the next show we got two shows they are both massive i would love to see you guys there 
Uh, it's general admission seating. So if you already have tickets, bring a friend along. I want to sell these out. They are two of the biggest shows I've ever done, and we're doing it twice. So shit loads of people are coming. I'm very, very excited for it. It's going to be absolutely huge. If you saw me last year, it is quite literally twice as big as that. And last year, it was the biggest shit I've ever done. So I would love, love, love to see you there. Um, it's a big milestone achievement for me. It is the biggest show of the whole tour I know we're doing them early normally it's at the end but that's just how the dates worked baby so come along losebeers.com slash gigs bring a friend if they don't know who I am they'll they'll love my shit uh, as long as you know send them a few clips that we're putting out online if they want to come they should come all right that's the end I'll see you cunts uh, at the show I'll meet everybody afterwards uh, otherwise I'll talk to you next Sunday all right have a shit one see ya how do I turn this cunt off oh there it is